Welcome to Land Academy. This is the cash flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy unwanted vacant land and sell it for more on the internet. I'm Steve Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we are the experts in this niche land flipping business. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. All right, let's get this show started. Steve Butella here for Land Academy. Welcome to our cash flow from Land Show. In this episode, Jill and I talk about the questions we've received as speakers at a local REI event. Jill, this is so much fun giving talks like this with you. It's so fun to face to face. I love get, it. Get uh, everybody's. I, we're gonna we're gonna we'll explain what an REI event is in a second here, but Got it's a lot, a lot of, of fun. It. it is a lot of fun. Let's share the whole deal with our listeners. But before we do, take a question from a caller. Okay, Carol from St. Louis called in and asked, "I work full time and I'm trying to do this on the side." What is the best way to handle calls that come mm. in while I'm at my day job? Mm-hmm. Uh, hoping to leave that in a year. <laughs> wow, that's a good question. It is. You want to answer it? You you start, please. Yeah, so this, so this is actually incredibly important. Um, and I made this mistake when I started out. You really don't want to use your cell phone. It's going to catch up with you pretty quickly. So if you're sending mailers out, and uh, these, are peop- these are mailers and offers. These, If you're doing it properly, these are... These are documents they're gonna that the recipients are gonna stick in the the folder, the physical file folder, mm-hmm. forever. And save. And uh, so you want to have a phone number on there that's gonna last forever. Mm-hmm. Um, this is good free advice. Don't use your cell phone. Cell phone numbers change. People move. Stuff happens. You need to find a place, um, maybe online like RingCentral.com. And I'm not. We have no affiliation with these people. But you need to find a place where you're, you're gonna get a phone number that you're gonna have for an extremely long time. Mm-hmm. And I know it costs money. Nobody likes to pay monthly fees for all this stuff, but it, it's, worth it's it. saved. I mean, we get calls yep. on mailers that we sent out in the, from the early 2000s mm-hmm. because of that. If we ever changed our phone number, it would be lost. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So to answer your question, uh, question, Carol, from St. Louis, you um, need to hire a, a service. Mm-hmm. You need to hire a service that's going to answer your calls, a live service. Yep. You're going to dramatically increase the number of uh, um deals that you do. Mm-hmm. If someone live answers the phone and they're nice and they say, you know, Carol's not here right now, but I'll, she usually returns her calls at XYZ and uh, thanks for calling. That it makes a world of difference, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Some people will say no. They make it just a cell phone message. Well, you know, I've been re- in um, Success Plan. I see a couple different people do, doing different things and trying different things and even having different scripts on, on their, they have recordings and scripts. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know what the, all the percentages are, but I, I've been watching people try different things because there's a lot of folks in the same situation. This is not their number one thing. They're hoping it's going to be their number one thing and they just can't take the call at mm-hmm. that time. And what's another interesting point is a lot of, a lot of times it's, um, I have sellers calling on weekends too, because they have jobs. So sometimes it works itself out. Yeah. So you know, we, here, be here. be available if and when you can. Here's how Jill and I do it. We uh, a long, long, long time ago, probably 2001 ish or 2000, I moved from my office for office from my house to an office share situation, like they call it. Some different parts of the country call it different things, but out here we call it office share or executive offices, and we. Um, so we, uh, it's certainly not the cheapest way to go, but man, it's the most convenient. You know, where you're in an office building with a bunch of other people like attorneys and, and whatever, um, <clears throat> who, excuse me, who have different practices or do, do different things for a living. And then we have a common uh, receptionist slash admin help, which we never use. Mm-hmm. But what came with it was a bank of phone numbers because the guy that owns this office share thing, we now have a personal relationship with them and have, have for since that, that time. We have bet we picked the right place. Mm-hmm. It came with a permanent office, a uh, permanent phone number. So, if you're lucky enough to look around and, and ready to move out of your, out of your uh, house, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, VoIP is a permanent number. You know, mm. voice over internet. Okay, those you are permanent. Use, oh, yeah. that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Um, you could you could get a Google uh, voice number. Right, that's I've, permanent. Right, and free. I know people have done that. 
uh, you can also get a home, as crazy as it sounds, get a phone number from the phone company. You know, if you have a home phone number from the phone company, that's the, yours forever if you want to keep it. You know, you got to pay. I, I sound like I'm 80. Five bucks or eight <laughs> bucks a month. And, uh, hey, and you can forward that anywhere. Do you know what's really cool? You can forward it to your cell phone. You can forward it to your new office. You can, for, you can forward that to a new city. And if you're lucky, maybe it comes with an answering machine, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I know, Joe. I know, I know, I know. Right when I, know I first started, right. I had we used our home phone, and and uh, it worked out great. You know, it's funny. It's someday, not our number now, but you know, <laughs> someday someone's going to say, "What is a home phone?" You know what I mean? Why would I do that? <laughs> One of our one of our kids a couple months ago picked up an office phone here, the youngest one. Oh yes. And he picked it up and he put the thing to his ear and he said he dialed a number and said, "Where's the send button?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh. <laughs> so funny. Okay, so let's talk about our the experience. I think we answered that. Okay, did you? I think for Carol. Yeah. All right. I hope. Okay, let's talk about our our. Um, event our experience the other night yeah what i got out of that jill i would love to hear your thoughts on this we haven't really talked about it in detail but what i got out of that was a lot of like i asked right at the beginning i asked everybody to raise their hand if they've never done a deal and probably 80 percent of the people did and so it was a great way for for me to get information about the basic 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 101 questions that people have mm-hmm. you mean 80 so percent of them had not done had a deal. not done a deal yes so please tell us what an REI event is in general before we even get into this. So, okay. And where people can find them and, and okay. all that. Um, like ours, it's it's AZ REI. It's, it's real estate investor is what it is. And there are groups, uh, they get together to, um, um, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Collaborate. Well, collaborate. And learn. And learn and network. That's it. Because mm-hmm. sometimes... Someone might be working on, they, they, sometimes they do, they specialize in different things and they can, you know, work together and maybe you're a flipper, you might go to something like this because you need a contractor and someone might have a good contractor so they can do some networking and, and things like that. So mm-hmm. what, um, and I just found it. So that's what the event is. I only know he, I, this is, a, this group is the only group I've ever been involved in and and gone to. Me personally, mm-hmm. I know you've done other ones. Yeah. I know that this one, it's a paid membership. I have no idea even how much it is. So I didn't I, even know that. Yeah, it's a paid membership. Those because, people paid to be Yeah, there? that event last night was not free. It was for members only. So they're oh, all they should in pay this, us to speak then. Uh, you know, maybe we will work on that. <laughs> so I was just happy to be there and, and check Me out too. this group and Me see. Because it was a new a new group. And they meet once a month. And the people come and go. And it varies. But um, how do you find it? Google it. Um, I know. Or bigger pockets. Or in biggerpockets.com. That community they talk about events and they might even share meeting times in there with different um cities and things i've seen that mm-hmm. and they're talking about it and i've even seen people saying hey i'm in x city and i can't find one because there's so many investors in that community you know right. should we start one i've seen people talking about that so i don't know what's all involved maybe we there. should start one joe that's a good idea because I don't have enough going on right now. <laughs> you just, that was a trap. See the look on my face? I know. That <laughs> honestly, was a trap. Like, what do I say to that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. I love that. <laughs> Took my breath away. <gasps> what? <laughs> I come up with these cockamamie ideas Oh, all the time. my goodness. So I hope that answers where to find it and I hope it answers what it is. It's a great – gosh, it, so many of those people were new – and like you said, did had not had done a deal before. And it's a great way. You know what? It's a great place for people like people starting out to meet people like us who are not new, who have 15, mm-hmm. almost 16,000 deals under our belts. Boy, and ask us questions. And that's really, I think, what it's for. That's the beauty of it. You have experienced people there face to face that can answer all your questions. Right. I mean, I swear at these events and this goes, I've said this before with uh, consulting that we do Mm -hmm. online or Skype consulting. Basically, I I swear I get more out of it than they do. Mm -hmm. I learn, you know, 
you get involved in something like this and do it for a lot of years and you completely forget about the grassroots mistakes that you made, whatever, a lot of years ago. And, and really, the, it ended up being a QA and a at the end about like, one person asked, can you list the, the serious mistakes that you made that you can so we can avoid them? Mm-hmm. I love so that. So I did. Me, too. I love yeah. it, too, because I really had to dig deep. Like, I'm, I'm thinking I had to think for a while. Do you remember? I remember what I I know what I said. My first one. Go ahead. Don't get hung up on that on a deal. It's oh yeah, easy yeah. to Just say. Over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this it, this sounds so great. Never, I'm going to make it happen, but but there's all these things that that are wrong with it. That maybe there's a I don't know the the it's priced not right. You know or let me let me address that right now. Yeah. This is really helpful. Mm-hmm. Sit down with yourself in a blank piece of paper after you've listened to a bunch of these podcasts or, or whatever source of education that you're getting as an investor. Sit down with yourself with a blank piece of paper and at the top of it, put acquisition criteria. Because a lot of people at the end of this program last night brought up these crazy pie in the sky schemes that they're all wrapped up in. They're never going to make a dollar on it. Let me give you a couple examples. And you want to stick to your acquisition criteria. Maybe it's 40 acre properties that you're going to buy for three grand and sell them for six. And you don't want to look at anything else. Mm-hmm. Some, the, the, some of the things that were be, being described last night were this. Oh, I know my Aunt Sally had this boyfriend who had a, a farm and it had six subdivided parcels in the back and there was no debt on and on this crazy, crazy story, crazy mm-hmm. personal story. And this person who was describing this when she was done, I was as polite as possible. Mm-hmm. I said, this is, you should never know this. Right. Whatever your acquisition criteria is, you should never know about this deal. I don't care if you're sure you can make a billion dollars. Pass on it. Because you need to move forward on your acquisition criteria and get the machine rolling. Mm-hmm. Consistency, consistency, consistency. She got that. Consistent yeah. mailers, consistent product type, uh, consistent relationships at the county, and travel along the path of A to B to C. And when you're rich and famous and you want to do some cockamimi crazy real estate deals out there like the one she was <laughs> describing, <laughs> describing, have at it. But even to this, day, to this day, I know there's a bunch of deals you and I could go do, Jill, uh-huh. and I don't. I don't feel like I, I, it's just I know it would take a year uh-huh. and I know we would make a ton of money and I don't want to do it. Or would you know what I come back to what I said, OK, let's let's talk about this. And when I point out to her, OK, this this deal sounds oh, it sounds great right now and, and all of things perfect. What do you think you're going to make? I don't you know what if let's just say you spend four months on it and you make twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, do you know what I could have done in four months? Let's think about <laughs> you this stuck to the program. Right. And she's like, oh. I'm like, yeah, let's let's think about that. Mm-hmm. Move on. You're right. Don't get hung up on that stuff like you just said. Have that criteria and stick to it. I told the story last night. I'll tell it again. I sold a property, an 80-acre property in Southern California to a guy a lot of years ago, and I never remembered the deal. I don't remember these deals. We've done 15,000. We have people under, uh, under us who actually do the deals once we reel them in. So the, a guy... F- in a scary kind of way, track hired a private investigator, got my cell phone number, and I get this random phone call one day, and I answer it, and the guy says, you don't owe me at all. And he tells me the story. You sold me this 80-acre property in Southern California. I bought it for X. I sold it for Y. And so I look back, look, I, you know, I, the numbers are this. I bought it for about eight grand, and I think I sold it to him for maybe twenty two or $30,000. I don't remember the exact numbers. It was something like that. And he told me, do you have any other properties like this? And I said, probably, but that's just not how this works. I don't, <laughs> right. you know, there's a whole list of them on XYZ.com. Go take a look. Uh, this is a lot of years ago. Right. Our dot coms were all different back then. And he said, you know, I'll tell you, I, that property is a municipal airport now. Yeah. I sold it for 1.2 or 1.4 million bucks to the county or awesome? whoever. And I said, congratulations, man. That's awesome. You know? And I expected myself to feel kind of bad about it, like, darn it, you know, I could have done that. So then I started thinking, between then and now, how many deals have I done? More than $1.2 million net worth. Right. So I'm making your point in a Mm -hmm. roundabout way, Joe. Have an acquisition criteria and work it, work it, work it, and you're going to do great. Mm -hmm. Forget about these one-off pie in the sky. You know, I asked the class that, that we teach, what's an entrepreneur? You know what they all said? It's it's uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, that's that was not, that's not an entrepreneur. Right. What we do is an entrepreneur. Right. You don't. That's a pie in the sky, one off, crazy. I mean, congratulations, Mark. You nailed it. You right. Got, what happened is he got lucky. Exactly. And I'm not saying he's talentless. I'm just saying he's the right place, right time. Just he nailed it. Mm-hmm. 
So we're, I'm, I'm not going for that. Mm-hmm. And you shouldn't either. As a real estate investor, you should get a system in place where mm-hmm. you, so you can make have a ton of money coming in and it's easy. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that you said last night that I really loved and I wanted to share with our listeners is you're something's going to pick you. You usually don't pick it in this world. So the, the investors there, by the way, they might be single family residents. They might be multi-unit. They might be apartment buildings. They might be commercial. That's one of the cool things too, about these events. You get everybody there that does all kinds of properties Mm -hmm. talking about stuff because some of the, some of the, some of the, um, strategies and how we do stuff is universal. You know, right. like our, our, our whole program oh, really yeah, is yeah. universal. Most of the people there were uh, single family residential flippers, mm-hmm. or at least they thought they were going to be. Right. You know, and I've done a, I did a whole thing on this once about, I mean, start with land. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you can start with houses. Mm-hmm. We, Jill and I still uh, flip ho- wholesale houses out, but I don't like doing it. Right. I, I'll tell you, there's a catch to every deal. Yeah. There's something you got to, there's, oh, wait a minute, we got to do this. It's usually because people come to us and they need the money and we're happy to back them because it's that good of a deal is how, <laughs> how we get roped into these things. I'm not out there looking for them, but you right. know, they, they come, they find you. Well, we, you know, like we they sent so they, a ton of mailers find you. they still come back. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, but that, that you're right, Jill. In a, I, you find your specialization. The thing that you think your specialization is going to be in the beginning, it doesn't end up being that. My, My specialization right in the beginning was long-term care facilities, assisted living facilities and nursing facilities. And boy, I got out of that. I mean, it's extremely <laughs> profitable. I mean, crazy profitable, but I got out of that as fast as I could. You want to talk about her? I talk about this in the free ebook. Yeah. You want to talk about a complicated transaction? Jeez. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't come more complicated than that. And then I went from that to the easiest transaction on the planet, which I, is a vacant you, land. Where there's no one involved except you. You did a 180. It's like you went <laughs> running, screaming from that. It's, it's like I touched the stove, you know? <laughs> That's so funny. I am not doing that again. Uh, all right. Any last misconceptions about property flipping or I don't know. Uh, I think there's a huge misconception that it's hard. Ah, that's true. It's ridiculously easy, I think. That's true. That's a really good... I think, uh, you know, I have to come back to what you say all the time, Jill. If it's it's super hard and you're really struggling with it, anything in life, Mm -hmm. it's not for you. Yeah. If you're banging your head against the wall at math class, in math... I shouldn't say this. I'm going to say it anyway. (laughs) If you're banging your head against the wall about math, a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, Math is not for you. Yeah. You're probably not going to learn it. I think there are some things you have to just put the goggles on and, and do it, and that's it. But it's if it's true. really hard and you're just not, a, it's not for you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. If we, oh, Jill just fell asleep again. I did not. That, that's how I know. Do you know what's funny? That's how I know I'm, I'm talking too much. Can I tell you much. something funny? I got I to gotta bring this up right now. I have to bring it up. You are so Michigan and I am so California. You and I say the exact same things, 100% different. The way I say it, you say, if if this is wrong, don't do it. I say, if this is right, do it. (laughs) That's what's so funny. I was a little confused at the the way you're wording things because I'm like, that's that's exactly it. That's just not how I say it. but, But it's the same it's the same, we're getting to the same ending, but I just word it so differently. Right. And so I was looking at you going, I can't believe how my words, uh, when they hit your brain, <laughs> they t- <laughs> it's translated. When it's- Every time I start something new, I, I say to myself, this is probably never going to work and it's going to end in a fiery ball of disaster. And then when it works, right. I'm like, man, this worked out great. I'm surprised and happy. I, it took me how many years it took me to get over that saying. <laughs> like, why does he walk around saying that? But for you, you know what, Stephen? For you and your personality, and I'm not digging on Michigan people or Detroit or anything, but you, I, I think you need to be prepared for the worst, just in case. And you're pleasantly surprised. I go at things so differently. Always. Mm-hmm. I'm always like, this is going to work. You know what? I'm going to make it work. I'm going to force this till it works. And then if it, I have to give up, a, like I really was wrong, like mm-hmm. I'm not going to be a supermodel or, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. A race car driver, uh-huh. dream it up. You know, I did my best and I eventually have to give it up. 
give it up. Race car driver. I don't know. I was just supermodel. Trying. I don't know. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. I never really wanted to be those things anyway. I just I don't know where they came from. But <laughs> you you know, I just I it's funny. We we go at things a little bit differently. That's why but we're, it's maybe we're good at this. Maybe it is. Thank you. <laughs> hey, join us on another episode where Jill and I discuss your all important success in property investment and in life. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's you're I you're right. And I don't think it's bad. I know. I just felt bad. I what was if looking we were both at you. Like you. I was totally. Or we're I'm like, like both like me. It would be a mess. Wow. Listen to how I was really taking a step back and listening to how you describe my concept, and I'm like, that is not how I describe it at all. But it really means the same thing. It's just so interesting. Yeah. So I think if we were both the same, it'd be it would be tragic. Nothing if we like were both like you. Oh my god. We would just walk around with like and just like and uh, with a happy high all the time and nothing to get done. <laughs> That's and if we were both like me, we'd be walking around like you are. But everything going, would oh, be organized. This is never gonna work. Perfect. It'd be all organized with no revenue at all. <laughs> this is a big ball of depressing red red numbers on a sheet of paper. Why isn't the phone ringing? <laughs> <laughs> everything looks great. The website's perfect. My office is perfect. There's nothing out of place, but the phone doesn't ring. (laughs) This should have been called Roast Steve. That's the name. That's the name of this episode. No, I didn't mean. I didn't mean it as a negative thing. Ever ever heard a woman complain about a man being too clean and too organized? We. I want to hear. I want to hear somebody call in and say, "Yeah, you know, my wife said that about me." All no, Jill. No, it's okay. You know what I think would be funny? I think it'd be funny to take pictures of both of our offices and put them like on our website side by side so you can see this is how Steve rolls. This is how you know Jill what? rolls. There's nothing in my office. I know. I don't have any papers. I you have don't a have pen. a trash can. I know. That's the way it should be. I Want to hear a funny story? Yes. A lot of years ago, I got I was ups- I got mad at the staff because it was just a mess. You know, some people that's just the way that I guess they work. Mm-hmm. So and and I am a, we're almost completely paperless except for deeds and stuff. We're generally about ninety percent paperless because mm-hmm. we need to see everything for functionality. Well, they weren't getting it. So <laughs> have I ever told you the story? You have share it, please. I took away everybody's filing cabinets. I look. I removed them I, in a in like a semi fit of rage. Mm-hmm. And that's not really rage. We we're all laughing about it at the time and while right. it was happening, but. I mean, I was serious. I took all the waste baskets out. I took all the filing cabinets out, and I put a shredder right in the middle of the office. And I said that that we're done now. Like I, I ripped off the band aid. Right. And it worked. Yeah, it's good. Everybody took it seriously after that. That's good. Don't know why I shared. Well, that doesn't matter. Come to Jill's office. There's a <laughs> trash can, and it's pretty. There's, There's even magazines in there. There's talk of a. There's talk of a couch and stuff. There's talk of a couch. Cool. There's a talk cool of a office. sitting area. We all just got new offices. Right. I have a little sitting area off the side and I'm going to do something with it. I haven't decided yet. I would love to have a table and like some chairs so I could sit there and like, you know, talk. If anybody comes in, we can just say, let's sit over here and mm-hmm. have some tea. That's what's coming. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I am so some not tea. kidding. Yes. I think that would be nice. It's coming. Just wait. <laughs> There's a bottle of whiskey in my office, not tea. Uh And that's the difference between California and Detroit right there. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Let's go buy some property. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. If you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable, niche real estate operation, call 480-467-0359. You just might get Jill at the other end of the line. Landacademy.com. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.